a long time before any of us players stepped into Carbardia, the Empire ruled, controlling lands and subjugating peoples of anyone that stood in their way. Not yet was there a power to test them, a faction of pure brute strength that showed all that much to test their armies, until Valandia. They didn't come from this known land, in fact, not one land in particular. Over the oceans, from different places of faraway lands, came lost souls, pirates, wanderers, and a populace with a lust for adventure. Scattered and without missions, these people became mercenaries, taking silver from powers to help them in their wars. And one faction that took on a great number of mercenary fighters was the Empire, using their cell swords to quell uprisings and guard frontiers against aggravated tribes stepping over their mark. And due to the vast wealth of the Emperor at the time, their bands of mercenaries grew to a scale of almost sole armies built of paid foreigners. For years did these men fight for the Empire, adopting their heavy cavalry, large kite shields, and strong infantry. Yet nothing would last forever. Soon with the Empire's expansion, recruiting paid soldiers to guard their borders became harder and harder, and soon the silver started to run dry. In an attempt to keep these now well-skilled and equipped soldiers fighting under their name, the Empire gave them land in payment, grants and titles, creating nobles from these once mercenaries and lost wanderers. And whilst this worked for the Empire short term, unfortunately they did not foresee the long term implications. One of the first warlords to come to Kyradia was Willemd, the bold Vandalorian. A fearsome warrior who made his name fighting for the power of the land like many others. So, as the travellers settled in their newly given towns, they took the name Valandians. The Valandians led good lives, farming, trading, building villages, to towns, to fortresses. They took wives, and they started bloodlines of their own. Over time, the Valandians grew in number, and also confidence. Osrak Ironarm, a strong-willed terror of a man, proved himself to be worthy of Fane throughout the new peoples and declared himself as king. He seized the imperial capital of Baravinos and took on the coastal towns, capturing and taking them for himself. And so this became the true start to the Valandian Empire. Throughout the years, the faction reigned with power, strength, and of course, fear. Now with the decline of the empire itself, Valandia thrived and only grew stronger and stronger, taking over more and more land. Then now King Durthret campaigned for decades on end, war after war, foe after foe, defeating and conquering. But he became weary. He had engraved his name in the legacy of Karadi already and needed to take a step back from it all. But being the nature of power, it was clear this would not be an option for him. As now a huge empire, dissent started to form in the Valandians. Barons pursuing their own agendas, gaining land for their own rather than the good of the faction itself. Parties splitting off to create their own minor factions to take on and try and grow. Durthwit knew if he was going to keep his power, and more importantly his life, there was much more fighting that had to be done. And that is where we enter into the game. A story of lost wanderers turning into a faction to rival that of the Empire. You may have noticed the similarities between the Valandians and the Empire themselves. I mean, the use of heavy cavalry, which in some cases are superior even to the Empire's own. The heavy foot infantry and of course, the use of crossbows in numerous situations. The Valandians are based on the feudal states of early medieval Europe, in particular the Normans. They were Norse raiders who settled in France to go on to, of course, create a life and a kingdom of their own, taking Sicily, the Holy Land, and of course, England itself. These warriors used their horses to break any enemy line that stood in their way, the Couchlands being the weapon of choice, crushing through anything, wood, steel, or flesh. Now in the campaign itself, you'll find the Valandians control a large proportion of the map, more than any of the other factions, and this shows their vast growth throughout the years. Yet it doesn't make it easy. In fact, having the opposite effect. There's fiefs and lands that aren't loyal to their king, proving to be troublesome from the get-go, forcing players to quell and put a halt to any hostile behavior within their own faction and reign. One of the minor factions players may encounter during their time in the Vlandians are the Golden Boar, a company of, you guessed it, mercenaries, ready to fight for whoever has the most coin. The Vlandians are a powerful faction, used to steamroll through anyone they encounter, 
but be wary. Many of the men fight for whoever gives them the best deal. Keep the troops happy, keep the kingdom. Simple as that. A tale of wanderers, mercenaries, and kings. Will the Volandians regain their power in the center of Karadia? Well, that is only for you to decide. Make sure you join my giveaway for Mountain Blade 2 Battlelord, which will conclude on the 30th of March, ready for release. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment if you want a chance of winning. But either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed my second video in the history of Karadia, looking into the faction lore on the lead up to Battlelord's release. The reception on the Empire introduction last night was incredible, and I hope this really lives up to its predecessor's quality. If I did, make sure you leave a comment and you like the video itself, as it really helps the channel. But until then, guys, I will see you in the next one.